It is indeed the 23rd day of January 2017. Joel, something continues to bother me. Mm. The state of our security in terms of uh, police bringing along its rank and file. Folks who, one, it has called different names. Remember there was a time there were LDUs. There was crime preventers. There is so-called Balokole, as Sobi described himself. Folks who have been in the trenches causing mayhem and how they get treated and they join. That's how VCCU, for example, comes into play, getting all these former brigands. That's how you get characters like this fellow Nixon in jail. Never had any form of police training, but he's just a big, powerful ex-thug, or some argue that he's still a thug. Now, Boda Boda 2010 comes into play. Doesn't that really bother you? Yes, there is something like using a thief to catch a thief. Or, as has been seen in more developed polities, having the <coughs> NYPD, having uh, undercover cops who are into the drug cartel and all that, but out there to gather intelligence. Mm. But this doesn't seem to be the case. Ours seems to be, you get rogues, put them in the police, and in so doing, you actually buttressing their roguedness. What's the adjective from rogue? You roguedness? It, uh -huh, whatever it is. Mm. That should bother us. You see, I, I'm no expert at these things, eh? but um, here is my bird's eye view. I could be totally wrong. Where bird is spelled but as B-A-D. Yeah, yeah, but no, B-I-R-D, <laughs> uh, even for senior. But seriously, you see, when there's beef between police and the intelligence networks, I don't know whether it's just because at the top there's a bit of a feud. I don't know if it's just a bit, but there's a feud between General Kaihura and General Tumukunde. Uh, they come out to say, look, yes, we have disagreements, but we keep working together. But there's no working together that happens at all. Police has a huge budget of about 487 billion shillings. The other side, they are struggling with a niggardly budget. And so inevitably, the beef gets to exist because of that and many other reasons. And at the end of the day, police must gather intelligence somehow. So if these guys are not feeding police with intelligence, police is going to work with the prostitutes. You heard them say that they're working with the prostitutes. They're going to work with the thugs to do intelligence at the end of the day. So what intelligence do you expect at the end of the day? Little wonder when there's a murder or something that has happened and there's an outcry. They will go and arrest a hundred people and a couple of months down the road, every one of those is acquitted. Why? They have no connection to the murder and it's business as usual. I, I think but let's look at, when you say police, mm. I think it's important to look at the work method of the chief executive at police, mm. the individual called Karekai Hu. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying for all his training, a master's in law and all sorts of other trainings he's gathered along, the man was even at Fort Leavenworth. If I'm Does he actually have a master's in law? Well, I think he attempted to study one and then he quit to join the liberation struggle. But clearly he's a man that has got a bachelor's in law, for mm -hmm. example. He was at Fort Leavenworth, one of those prestigious U.S. Uh, Army colleges. He has been in this business for quite some time. But he strikes me as a man that relies largely on rumor mongering, anecdotal evidence, and a lot of populism and pandering to the public gallery. You recall, for example, when he was promoted to general, mm. how he organized the bonanza. Oh yeah, he moved speed, through Kampala, and, and my goodness, I was speaking to some folks yesterday, I said, mm. this thing here, but, but you see, Kale Kaihura is your quintessential politician, you know. In police He's garb. just wearing the police garb and, and uh, having a title, general. At, at the end of the day, they are doing a lot more political work than police work. I was speaking to the police spokesperson it, yesterday. Are they doing it for the NRM? Mm. Or, as I have heard from some corridors, he, Kaihura, may actually be doing what he does to undermine the status mm. quo so that there is incredible <coughs> disenfranchisement from the masses and the purge mm. to destabilize the status quo. We talk about President Seven as president. And then he emerges as a knight in shining armor. I don't know about that. Uh, it's possible. But the more believable one really is that he's trying to buttress you with Kaguta Museveni's regime. That's really? a fact. That's why he has a huge budget. Which budget? You don't get to see and what it really gets to do. To President Museveni that mm. he's going to do political work for him. Mm. But now intelligence and other more informed people are beginning to mm. see beneath his lies. Mm. The likes of General Tumukunde to say, wait a minute. This guy, from the way he's doing this, work, and there has been some rumors that he has also been working with foreign countries that are not necessarily very much friendly to Uganda. Mm. And it portends some trouble. You had some reports saying that some of these characters of Boda Boda 2010 have been receiving some training from another country. Can we verify those reports? Here's what I think. 
you see, from the very onset, uh, President Museveni put this guy in place to try and buttress his regime. Clap down heavily on the opposition. Anybody that tries to hit the streets, such that there is no insurrection or that kind of thing, penetrate the opposition. You know, even if it's to the extent of, uh, I mean, we had that, that audio that was making the rounds. You know, he was paying off people to give him information about political party activities and not about criminal activities and that kind of thing. But you see, increasingly along the way, uh, because the President Museveni trusted him with that power, with the resources to do for him a good job, with the resources at his disposal, etc., etc., Kaihura all of a sudden becomes powerful. And that's why when he moves through Kampala, every people wants to kiss his shoes, you know, because he's become increasingly powerful. And obviously that gets to his head. He thinks, but wait a minute. Mm. I've got resources at my disposal. I've got people that I call at my beacon and they run easily. I've got people that adore me. Even if it's just for, you know, what I can give to them. And maybe things begin to get into his head. But, mm. Can't I also run the show? Maybe that now plays into what you're saying. That it's possible. It's very possible that he begins to have and harbor those thoughts. Uh, how far will they go? I don't know. What's for sure is that he's been exposed. And uh, that exposes the channel all the way up. When you hear killings that like was reported in the areas of Zimbabwe and the massacre area, and now some of these characters of Border Border 2010 admitting, I am told, mm. to have had an idea about them. And yet we know that whenever these murders take place, the first person that runs there to commiserate with the families and all that is the police chief himself. Do you think he has an idea that he's running an outfit that possibly is going to grow out of control for him? Or he's just running the way it should be? Make the place ungovernable and then mm. somehow come in again like a knight in shining armor try and sort it out? I believe Kaihura knows what he's doing. Um, he knows that these guys are uh, bandits, and maybe that's why he uses them. Could it also be that there's a lot that um, he has to hide, and these guys cover that for him? I don't know. I cannot say that for sure. But it's very possible. I mean, he's always defending them, even when blatantly. They, in a very rough manner, do what's wrong, beat up people. We have seen that happen, but he goes out to defend them. So it's possible they cover his tracks of whatever evil he's doing. I don't know what that is, really. We can just talk about it, but uh, I think he knows what's happening. Mm. So this whole hoodwinking of, you see, these are guys that are helping us fight crime. Cut us that nonsense. You know that they have been abating crime. They have been involved in criminality, and you know that for a fact. So for you to tell us that, look, they're helping us to fight crime and that kind of thing, I don't buy that. And that's why the other day when Kaihura was going to be tried, um, these guys say, no, we're not going to allow Kaihura to be tried. You know, and by the way, that's an offense, obstruction of justice. Mm. But, but um, he, he enjoys that. So it's very possible they keep covering up his tracks because over the years that he's been IGP, there's uh, one too many wrong things that he probably could have done. And he needs uh, bandits to help him cover that up. I don't know what that is. I don't know if it exists, but most probably does. And that's where I pose my last question and say, what's the end game in this? What would you propose would be the end game? Why can't the appointing authority just <coughs> suck the man or put him on uh, a waiting list so that then we can see whether there can be an alternative and how the police can be run with an alternative leadership? You see, the appointing authority has his hands tied too. Mm. Uh, because Kaihura, let's By face it, Kaihura? let's face it, Kaihura has been doing a lot of dirty work for him, at least politically. And uh, even through those audios, you could does really he, see... Does he really care? I mean, do you see... Who? President Museveni or Kaihura? President Museveni, we saw here... He will pretend that he doesn't care, but I think he the does. The police itself has distanced itself from Boda Boda 2010, yet mm. they have been doing dirty work for them. So mm. why will President Museveni distance himself from Kaihura, even if he's been doing dirty work for him? Well, of course, in the media, they've got to try and put up a show. Uh, but look, I think his hands are tied, because if this guy has been doing all this uh, soily work for you... Uh, it becomes hard to put his head on the chopping block. But if look, you did what would happen, what's the worst that can happen? Mm. I don't know what his Let's fears are. Uh, I don't know what those uh, soily works are and uh, to what momentum they are because if this guy decides to expose him, I don't know what those are. Maybe the chickens get to come home to roost. But at the end of the day, the president should stand up and be counted. You see, the president cannot lament like me and you and everyone else. When he says, Kaihura, there's all these bandits in your police force, sort it out and so on. <coughs> You see, I keep saying this, and some people disagree, but you see, everything rises and falls on leadership. If the police force is going to get organized, and, and you see, the juniors down, they keep struggling, you know. 
because their boss at the top is working with all these criminals and then these guys are struggling to defend all of that and quietly they'll tell you hey, our job is a hard one you know our boss talks nice things about these guys and then they're doing all this messy work then we have got to try you know they are between the rock and the punching place if the police is to get cleaned one you want to remove that guy who he's become an institution of sorts yeah but then structurally you want to sort all of that out and get to see that there's a synergy because you see the police uh, ESO, ESO, they're not working together and yet ideally they should well, so well, police is focusing more on the political work where is basically going to be next week they know even where he will be next year or that kind of thing and, and so they'll try and track him down but they don't know about the bandits the people that are terrorizing people they don't because perhaps they don't care maybe that's not their mandate i would want to know what their job description is so you you want to remove that powerful figure because Kaihura has become so powerful the guys below him even the guys that that are just below him you know assistant inspector general police were before that deputy there, there's things they cannot say i'm waiting for my boss i don't know what he's going you know and and, and you see there's a lot of tension and that trickles down at the end of the have day. you been at the police headquarters yes i have several well, especially at the floor which has his office mm. i've actually been to his office interviewed him in his office mm. accessing that place my goodness, this guy is protected a lot more than Museve. They remove literally everything and, uh, you know, ransack you and so on. Uh, well, for his safety, I, I don't know. But uh, he is a beleaguered man. He's a man who lives in fear. Maybe for the right reasons. I don't know. Joe, it's been a pleasure having that perspective from you considering the fact that you are in the trenches of journalism and interfacing with these uh, happenings on a daily from a front seat uh, perspective as opposed to we who watch from the back seat and who only wait to see the things flaring up into such insurrections as we saw yesterday when the Border Border 2010 arrest operation was taking place and the days before that. We thank you for your perspective and let's take a breather. It's been the big story. When we return, it's more quality programming here on Morning at NTV.